This tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. With animation. Hi there, usually we talk about Maya in this channel. Today I'm going to talk about something deeply related to computer animation and it's about texturing. It's a project called Substance Alchemist. It's in version 0.6.1 currently. We're in uh, spring 2019 and uh, I can highly recommend you to download the trial version or the student edition of this beta of Substant Alchemist. It's uh, programmed by the French company Algorithmic. It's not algorithmic, it's Allegorithmic, and uh, you will really have fun with it. I just show you a few minutes of how to get going with this amazing tool and uh, which uses artificial intelligence uh, in a way. And what I won't show you is how to implement this into Maya. Not that it doesn't work, it does work, but it's really complicated and it's uh, it's still a mess. But you can, of course it's meant to land in one of the 3D animation uh, tools. Let's go here first. One of the parameters is the output resolution, which is doesn't matter really, but the mesh is inter interesting and I set it to plane. You can also have a cube here and you can use the Maya shortcuts on the keyboard to rotate around that cube. This is the rounded cylinder, for example, which is uh, empty. This is a sphere a sort of preview object here, which is mostly used, I think, but I use a plane today. This is the plane. I shot a photograph and I just, <laughs> everybody shoots photographs all the time really, uh, and I just want to use that photograph to show you the Im immense creativity in this program. Let's go to create. And here you have a, an empty section which will fill now with a lot of fun. Uh, go to the finder or the explorer and choose any of your photographs you've taken, just really any of them. Substance Alchemist will ask you what you want to do with it, uh, and we choose this option here, bitmap, that's the image, which it's a bitmap image really, all the photos we take are bitmaps, to material, we're going to create a material which we could later use in computer animation uh, and in modeling uh, to substance. Okay. And this is an amazing thing which already happens now. It's a tiling, of course, of uh, the photograph. Alchemist interprets the, the photograph and tries to find reflective areas. And you see the reflective areas are really the ones which are reflected in reality. That means that glossiness has been extracted from a flat image. The height has been extracted from that flat image as well. You see the grass here uh, is not shiny. Now this one is about the displacement uh, amplitude, the height basically. We can leave it like this in a really nice just smooth setting and the displacement quality and here you have the texture scale in U and V. For example, you can texture this thing um, by 4 by 4 And let's leave it like this, 4 by 4 Now, the tiles, when they touch each other, of course, they are not, there's not a natural flow between them. And that, that's hard to fix. But we can try something. And what we'll try first is we apply an equalizer, which equalizes the harsh light effects between these parts that part, that part, that part, etc. All the effects, you find them here. They're called layers, like in Photoshop. And um, this is the sequence we've done. We have a base material which was basically showing us just a flat plane. We imported our image and we made that bitmap image to a material. Uh, now we add something else which is called 
an equalizer. It equalizes the harsh lighting differences. So the whole image gets a little bit darker, but we have different lighting situations now in this setting. We can uh, change the equalizer settings or any of these settings by clicking on them and this section opens here and we have an equalizer radius for example which does uh, interesting things. In addition to the equalizer we'll now create another layer and it's called tiling. Tiling is very important for when you want to tile these things really. Already now you see the tiling does a great job. It all of a sudden finds structures like these. And uh, when you go here you see the tiling options and here you can change the perspective here, the aspect of this. And then all of these things will change when you go outside of that box. You can rotate things. So you can find your own angle here. And finally, what I want to show you is the rust. We add some rust. Currently there's no rust on the metal, but now there is. Uh, by the way, why do we have two aspects here? This is the flat, the 2D view here, and this is the 3D view. We want to get rid of this again. These are the icons for that. Uh, we're currently in the split setting, 3D and 2D. We could have only 2D and what we want now is only 3D. So we have that rust on top and with the rust I show you how to change that rust, uh, the rust how it spreads. We have a totally rusty setting now. Let's use a little bit more of displacement here because we want to add some water. It's all the way down here because it's uh, listed by alphabet water. You will see the water coming in in just a second. Here it is. You see the water with its shininess and uh, the interesting value of the water is not here. Why not? Because we need to click here in order to go to the water and that's the water level. When we lower it the water sinks into the into the rust and it's still there you feel it's kind of wet and you can do the same with snow and grunge etc. Did I say that was the last step? No. Um, well yes I did. Um, let's open this section here again. No oh, sorry that one. Here we have base materials and just choose any of them for example the slate tiles with moss and drop them in here, at the very top. Now we have a mixture of the texture we had before. Let's click here so we have more space. And the one <laughs> we just put on top here. We can uh, have a height blend, which the, that's the default, or a color blend, which is totally different because it doesn't change the height of our previous object here but uh, adds a lot of moss to the scene now. When you're finished with it you need to export it and it's this icon export current view and you would typically export substance archive and tell the destination path probably in the Maya Im source images folder and give the material a name and then click export. These are the image files, the texture files which are being exported. The base color for example is going to be that, that basic color. Uh, the diffusion here, the normal map is the bump map which we see but what we mainly see is the height map which we you, would, would you typically use for uh, a displacement map in Maya. And uh, once you're done with this, you can export it and it takes uh, a few seconds and then the substance file with that name here lands in a, a folder and you can import it into Maya. But I'll show you that in a different video and maybe I'll wait for a better solution because in Maya currently we have a substance menu but it doesn't help a lot. 
it's a complicated it's a rather complicated import process although uh, it can be done uh, alternatively you can uh, export XRs or TIFFs for example or PNGs and that will um, place the normal the roughness several pictures uh, in that folder as opposed to when you have a substance archive it will be only one file which basically contains all these images but doesn't show the images individually okay having said this i wish you a very good day and bye bye